depending on who you ask, you will likely get very different answers to what unit tests, integration tests, and end-to-end -to -end tests all mean. So before we go any further, I think it's important that we establish for the purpose of this course, what do I mean when I say unit versus integration versus end-to-end -end tests? When I say unit tests, I mean tests that exercise your code at the object or module level. And integration tests would exercise your code against things that you can't control. Things such as AWS services that you use, like DynamoDB or S3, or third-party APIs like Salesforce or Twilio, or it could be your own microservices. And for end-to-end -end tests, I want to exercise more than just my code. I want to make sure the whole thing works together with the event source that triggers my Lambda function, as well as the IAM policies and anything else that the system needs to work. So that's how I see unit tests, integration tests, and the end-to-end -end tests. But depending on your context, you might consider end-to-end -to, -end to mean more than just your backend services running in AWS. A full-stack team might view end-to-end -end as to mean including the front-end. And I think that's absolutely fine. And in fact, if you own the front-end as well, then you definitely want automated tests that can drive the front-end and test that it works with your back-end. But regardless, you should probably still have end-to-end -end tests that targets just the back-end. After all, not all back-end systems are front-end facing APIs. There are internal APIs, data processing pipelines, and event-driven applications, to name a few. Also, when those front-end tests fail, you're going to have a much easier time narrowing it down to the front-end or the back-end if you have dedicated end-to-end -end tests for the back-end. And for the purpose of this course, I'm going to use end-to-end -end tests to mean tests that exercise the AWS backend to make sure everything is working as expected. And in that context, imagine I have a Lambda function and its handler is going to look something like this, where it takes the Lambda invocation event and it's going to do something useful and then return a response. And so let's encapsulate the actual domain logic and represent them with this hexagon. Our domain logic is likely going to need some inputs to work with, so we would extract that from the invocation event somehow and pass it along to this domain logic. And whatever this domain logic returns, we might need to dress it up a bit and put it into the right shape. For example, API gateway functions need to return a payload that includes status code and other things like that. But those are things that our domain logic doesn't really need to worry about because it works with types that we will define as part of our domain. And in our Lambda handler, we'll convert the invocation event into the input domain type and convert the output into whatever shape our function needs to return, which leaves our domain logic nice and clean and it's easy to write unit tests for it. But wait, sometimes our domain logic needs more than just the data from the Lambda invocation event. Maybe it needs to get data from a DynamDB table. And sometimes the domain logic needs to write data out, maybe to another DynamDB table, or perhaps to push an event to EventBridge. So unit tests are great for making sure our domain logic is working correctly. Integration tests, as the name suggests, is great for making sure that our integration points with these external dependencies are working. A simple example would be when you're making a DynamDB query like this, and I'll give you a few seconds to see if you can spot the problems here. Well, the name attribute used in the expression is missing from the expression attribute values map, which at runtime, DynamDB would have rejected this request. But also, there is a typo, which also wouldn't have gone down well. And this sort of problems can be easily caught by integration tests that actually exercise this query. Okay, so that's what we are doing in our Lambda handler, but that's just what's inside the function. And if we zoom out, that's just one function, and the Lambda function doesn't make an entire serverless application. You might have an API gateway in front of it, and if the API is front-end facing, then it might be configured to use Cognito User Pool as authorizer. And the Lambda function itself 
would also need an IAM role as well. And this IAM role needs to give the function the permission to interact with DynamDB and the event bridge. And then there's also CloudWatch logs and the X-ray as well, which also requires additional IAM permissions. And when a user makes a request to your API, that request is going to traverse through everything. And if any part of it fails, the user is going to get an error and be disappointed. So our end-to-end -end tests are going to exercise the system through its external interface, just like the front-end client would, and it makes sure that every part of this whole system is working. But wait, API Gateway also supports direct service integrations. So in simple cases, where say you just need to fetch an item by ID from a DynamoDB table, you can actually have API Gateway go straight to DynamoDB without needing to use a Lambda function, which would be faster, cheaper, and more scalable. And this functionless approach has been getting more and more popular. But luckily for us, our end-to-end -end tests don't care about implementation details like this. It's interacting with the system through its external interface, which in this case are the API endpoints. So they're able to test these direct service integrations with no problems whatsoever. So that's how these different tests can help us ensure that different parts of our application are working correctly. But they also differ in other important ways as well. For instance, the end-to-end -end tests exercise the system through its external interface, but the unit and the integration tests only test what's inside the Lambda function. So as we iterate on our domain logic, we can be running our unit tests constantly, and we don't need to deploy anything to AWS because our domain logic is working with domain entities and types, and we can exercise this domain logic entirely on our machine. And when we're iterating on our integration logic with external dependencies, like fixing those two errors in our DynamoDB query earlier, because our last test run through an error on this query operation, and we've now figured out what the problem was, well, the good news is that the only thing that has changed is this bit of code. Nothing has changed on the architecture level. We haven't introduced any new DynamoDB tables or other dependencies. So it stands to reason that we wouldn't need to deploy any changes to AWS in order to test the updated query operation, since it's just a code change inside our Lambda function. But if we want to exercise the whole system end to end, we do need to deploy everything, make sure they're all up to date and has all of our latest code changes and configurations. And if anything is amiss, then the end to end test would pick them up. And since most changes are happening in our domain and integration logic, at least that's been my experience. So it means that most changes can be tested locally without needing to deploy your changes to the cloud first, which really helps to preserve the speed of your feedback loop. And don't worry if you can't quite see how this is going to work in practice just yet. We will get to that a bit later. And you'll be silly of me not to point out the elephant in the room that if you're going to run these integration tests locally, what are you going to do about these external dependencies? Do you use mocks or local simulators like local stack, or do you use the real AWS services? And when is the right time for each of these options? Again, I promise we'll get to that. And I'll even show you with live working examples later. But for now, seeing as I've tricked you into staring at this hexagon for a while, Let's talk about hexagonal architectures for a second. 